Are men trash? Oh, <laughs> cis, heterosexual men, absolutely, especially white men. What rights do you think that men have that women don't today? A woman can still walk a street and not feel protected versus a man can. Women are probably like underrepresented. Like it started off with great intent, but you have people who abuse the system. It's a hatred of masculine energy. It's like anti-men. Today I'm out here and I'm asking, is feminism still relevant in today's society? Yeah, absolutely. If anything, it's more relevant now than it ever was. Yeah, I would say feminism is still relevant today. You know, we built this country, men, but women at the same time got to supply more men, right? With no women, the world doesn't go around. If you look at like domestic abuse, for instance, we know that it happens to people of all genders, but it seems to be like disproportionately like affecting women. Is feminism still relevant in today's society? Yeah, I definitely think it is. They put up a lot of bullshit. They pull up with sexual harassment. They put up with a whole lot of bullshit that us men just don't have to deal with. Of course it's relevant. Throughout history, women have been discriminated against. Uh, it is, but I think it's changed a lot. Feminism started out as women's rights, and now it has skewed into something entirely different than what it was. Are we going too far? Did we do this and all the rest of that instead of being angry? Now it's morphed into something that's more preaching like a, a superiority over men kind of stance. Like I work with some people who would consider themselves heavy feminists, and they are constantly dogging on men, and they openly say, I hate men. I would say that as long as men are alive, feminism is always going to be relevant. Why? Because men. It's like today, we're more polarized than ever before. And if men and women can't get along, it can only hurt society. There are some, there are some radical feminists who generally hate men. They consider us a hate group. F the patriarchy. But in today's lack of nuance, is it considered sexist to even question the topic? And if I had to be honest with myself, could I do it without my own bias? I guess we gonna see. What rights do men have today that uh, women don't? Oh, let's go down the list. A woman can still walk a street and not feel protected versus a man can. I think we all have equality when it comes to laws. Men are able to walk out maybe in whatever they want to wear or, you know, be able to stand strong through societal pressure. I feel like women take a lot of precautions just by being a woman themselves, you know. Statistically, just going into like a corporate setting, if you look at how women are rated on performance review versus men, the language that's used, you know, assertive versus bossy or kind of the dynamic of how how individuals are interacting in the workplace, I do think that there are societal norms that place women at a disadvantage, absolutely. I think you have to, so for instance, for pregnancy, right, there's no law saying employers can't, like, fire you if you're pregnant. Or, like, abortion, for instance, like, that's a law that, like, only affects women, right? Well, but don't you think that's just kind of explained by, like, biological differences? But why does that justify making a law anyway? That literally discriminates women. And so biological differences lead to different treatments and reality. And so I wanted to take a different view on this topic of equality. Do you think today that women have certain privileges that men don't have? Yeah, part of that goes into being able to say certain things that, you know, men would, would get scolded for. They can just talk completely out of their ass freely. You're not allowed to say nothing back. Do you think, let's say, like, do men have problems that, let's say, that women don't experience? For example, in statistics, like, men have higher rates of suicide Side. and you know obviously men die more when it comes to like wars women can go to war yeah but uh, how about women like can go to war. it's There's true who's overwhelmingly going to war and dying in wars men i'm not gonna argue that <laughs> I mean, I feel like the war thing is a little hard to get into just because for the majority, men are going to war. It's not really women going to war, so of course more men die. Why do you think that is? I feel like that's just because it's kind of like the roles that society portrayed forever ago. Men are warriors, and men are the ones that are fighting, and then women... Do you think that. more women should go into war then? Absolutely not. <laughs> no. No woman should ever go into any military. But wouldn't that be going against equality if you're barring women from going in the military then? Well, I'm not saying barring, but I'm saying like I feel like as a woman you should know that you're not gonna be putting yourself in a healthy situation going into the military because like it's harder to be a woman in the military than it is to be a man. I think that feminism is also it's almost an excuse for behavior. Flashing your tits or something like that you know behaviors like that like but if a guy wanted to pull just just his balls out you know it would be it would be a little less socially accepted for sure. So. And, and I agree with that. Yeah. <laughs> Do you think in this sense that men have less privilege today than women? Privilege is all kind of like how you look at it what you're looking for. For. I think I'm pretty privileged. A lot of black people probably don't say they're privileged, so that's kind of how I look at it. We need to just stop looking and thinking everybody got greener grass and kind of just accept the fact we're not in a third world country, you know, with Russia invading us or some bullshit, you know what I mean? Like, life ain't that bad. It's 78 and sunny out. Chill the fuck out. And you're high as shit right now, aren't you? I'm cooked. <laughs> Thank you. <laughs> now, I don't know what to exactly make of what I'm about to explain to you next, but it may explain what's happening with society today. 
An experiment called Universe 25 created a mice paradise with an abundance of food and water. The aim was to study behavior over a time period in an attempt to explain human societies. And it was all good, but after 315 days, something unexpected happened. The population reached 600 and a hierarchy was formed with larger rodents starting to attack and cause male rodents to collapse psychologically. Under those conditions, social behavior broke down. This led to a new class of males called beautiful males who only care for food and sleep and isolated aggressive females who didn't want to reproduce. And eventually, the society collapsed because of the lack of reproduction, the lack of care for their young. And the scary part is, is that after repeating this experiment 25 times, the same results were observed over and over again. A viral Facebook post drew parallels to today's society with weak feminized men with no protection instincts and overly aggressive females with no maternal instincts. We need to kill all men. <laughs> It's a bit of a stretch, but is it possible that that's what's happening in the West today? Is the negative reaction of feminism coming from the fact that not only are women struggling, but also men? Let's take a closer look and see what this really means. May I ask you, like, what are some, like, examples of misogyny that you faced? Oh, let's see. I went through a... There was one time. I'm a psychology major. We were tasked with counting how many times we got catcalled. I realized every time during that month I went to a gas station at nighttime, I got catcalled. I've seen some of my guy friends literally make 30 grand more than some of my girlfriends and just because they're men. But let's say that the pay gap does exist. Why wouldn't firms just hire women then? They have to find probably quotas at this point. Do you think there's quotas for men? <laughs> No, probably not. Well, there's a lot more men in power in the top 1%. A lot of the women are the ones left in the dust. There's definitely like in the top 1%, I think there's definitely more men for sure. But let's say like in the bottom, right? Like most suicides are men. You know, most people with depression are men. Do we sometimes ignore that to maybe showcase disparities where it might not exist? Yes, men do have a disadvantage at that point. So is it fair to say then that both genders at this point maybe have disadvantages in certain situations, but when it comes to the law, they're pretty equal and even opportunities? Yes, it does have that societal influence more from a social standpoint. It's not necessarily what is placed in the law, but it has everything to do with how people interpret the law for themselves. With women, it's you have to jump through all these barriers in order to even be elected in office. However, I did hear though, like for every male college grad, there's two women college grads. Yeah. And I think I believe most college uh, students are actually women. So uh, I guess what would you say to that? I know that women are probably like underrepresented in like the military or in trade school. So men might find uh, more interest in doing that instead of like getting a bachelor's so like that's like a whole career path that like women really aren't being encouraged to do as much i mean i guess would you say that there's probably different interests in general between the genders now there's like much more of a push to get women to stem so there's like more of that but when i was younger there wasn't really that going on so it does raise the question does feminism account for the advancements made or would they have happened regardless and if so is feminism more important than ever to preserve progress and also to prevent regression towards inequality yeah absolutely i think it should it should remain originally it's not a toxic thing again what modern society has morphed it into especially you know things like social media it has turned it into more of a, a superiority kind of cloak than it is actually pushing equal rights so it did make me think are we at a point now where there's actually male inequality in the west and in a video titled exactly that seems to be the case my latest book is of boys and men why the modern male is struggling and what to do about it but is he just one of those red pill misogynists misogynistic, cisgendered, anti-feminist. What he found through his research is that women are leaving men behind in advanced metrics like education and the workforce. In the 70s, Title IX was implemented to close a 13% gap in college degrees between men and women, but now there's a 15% gap in favor of women with degrees. And so today, there's evidence that there's inequality on both sides. And as feminism has pushed more representation for women in STEM, we're not seeing similar efforts for men in female-dominated professions like HEAL or health, education, administration, and literacy. And with blue-collar jobs disappearing, men need jobs. And the thing is, there's availability. For every one STEM job, there's three HEAL jobs, but currently only 26 of those positions are filled by men, whereas 27% of STEM positions are filled by women. And so the more controversial a topic, the more we need to look at the nuance. But today, are we even able to, or even want a discussion in the first place? Are men trash? Cis, heterosexual men, absolutely, especially white men. Weren't you just talking about equality? Oh, absolutely. But we have to have that viewpoint because of how much we've been attacked just by that gender. But you just said that all straight men are trash. Like, that's a pretty big generalization, don't you think? It definitely is. It's not necessarily something I'm gonna like saying via statistics. I'm saying via experience. Are men trash? <sighs> <laughs>
No, I like my dad. He's not trash, so Mo most men are trash. I don't think men are trash. Men just have more advantages. But like I said, like I wouldn't want to be on the front lines of like you know some <laughs> army. I don't. That's when feminism goes out the window, right? Yeah, that's it. One hundred percent does. So I wanted to ask the same, but the reverse. Are women trash then? Uh, no, I don't think anyone's <laughs> trash. I like people. I think that there are some people that have had really bad hands, but in general, I would like to think that most people are good. What would happen if we said that women are trash? I say it. <laughs> yeah? Yeah, I think they're trash too. I thought you were a feminist. I'm not a feminist, no. Maybe a little misogynistic, no, I'm just kidding. <laughs> but all kidding aside, in order to have a discussion, there needs to be mutual respect. And if equality truly is the goal, do they mean that in all aspects? Why do you think women are allowed to say that men are trash, but men can't say that women are trash? Because, I mean, just based off of history, you know, men have been the dominant sex. I mean, not even really a hundred years ago, women were more of an obtained piece of property. Sometimes women are trash. But I think more men than women, for sure. It's one of the many double standards. Standards. That's because of what feminism has turned into. It's no longer about the quality of men and women, it is more the differences between men and women. And in recent times, that history of inequality has been exposed in no other place than Hollywood. With Hollywood's sex abuse scandal growing by the day, Me Too movement. Me Too. Me Too. Me Too. The Me Too movement in 2017 raised awareness to numerous stories of sexual abuse of women in the workplace. And not only was the movement successful in exposing individuals like Harvey Weinstein, it even had an impact on public policy through the passage of the laws to prevent harassment in the workplace. But like anything, the pendulum swings both ways. Despite its success, the Me Too movement promoted extreme slogans such as Believe All Women, and along with it created a climate of fear where innocent men were unfairly accused and reputations destroyed. Did Johnny brutalize you? Stop, Amber. Stop. And the most notable was the Johnny Depp Amber Heard case where Heard wrote an op-ed alleging that she was a victim of abuse. And it wasn't until four years after getting canceled from everything when Depp won the defamation trial for the false allegations. Do you think that in a certain way Me Too movement also went too far? It's started off with great intent and it's designed to have great intent but you have people who abuse the system and people who take advantage of it and they see a payday or a time for fame and it ruins it for the real people out here who are actually victims. Me too is for true survivors. It's clusterfuck of bullshit. And it's the unfortunate reality that any overcorrection swings back just as strongly in the opposite direction. And so is this what's happening in modern feminism in the West today? And if so, how can we correct this overcorrection before it's too late? The best way that I could learn from you is by sitting down and listening to yeah. you and, and really trying to understand, seeking to understand where you come from and learning from that dynamic and that, that dialogue. I say conversations like this, yeah. right? Absolutely. Yeah. I think that we need to get rid of terms like feminism. Feminism is more of like a suppression of masculine energy essentially getting rid of that sense of like dominance of one over the other would be the the better society to exist in because if negative attention wasn't enough it's now becoming harder to be a feminist even if you're a feminist <laughs> For years, the author of Harry Potter, J.K. Rowling, identified as a feminist who advocated for women's rights, whether it be speaking out or through donations or advocacy. But in 2020, it was as if none of that mattered anymore. After expressing concern on Twitter what constitutes a woman, she was berated by activists as misogynistic and most notably, a TERF. TERF stands for Trans Exclusionary Radical Feminist and is an acronym used by trans activists to describe someone as transphobic for believing that gender is based on biological sex. Due to this, Rowling has faced strong criticism to a point where it has impacted her legacy. The new video game Hogwarts Legacy is labeled so controversial to a point where Twitch streamers are refusing to play it for fear of being called transphobic. And similarly, it's this extremism masked as inclusion that's dividing the feminist movement from within and confusing the original message of equality for all. Would you say you're a feminist yourself? Absolutely. I wouldn't say I'm not a feminist. I just think that like the word feminism needs to be redefined. What should it be called? Uh, I don't know. Seeking truth and justice and equality. I don't know. The men are trash group? No, men are not trash. <laughs> and so if women are hesitating to identify with the movement, it's likely due to the impact of the extreme. Because if equality is achieved through bringing others down, it's creating issues where none exist, perpetuating double standards. But with that said, feminism is needed. While true equality may be difficult to achieve and some may not actually desire it, nothing significant ever came about through indifference. The pendulum is ever swinging and we need individuals who push for progress and serve as a check to maintain balance. But today, how can we even navigate differences if we can't even question the nuance? I guess it's up to me to lead the way. And it all starts with exploring the unfamiliar. Thanks for watching and subscribe if you want to see more content where I turn street interviews into investigative journalism. And if YouTube gets it right, you'll like this video too.